OK, takže odpoveď teda, poznám slova veľmi dobre. Round one. Question one. This round is Christmas party shenanigans. So what did they get up to on their parties? Which then Man City midfielder got into a spot of bother at the club's 2004 Christmas party after stubbing a cigar out in youth team player Jamie Tandy's eye. In his eye. <laughs> Australian defender Hayden Fox got into trouble after amassing a bar bill of two grand on a Christmas night out in trendy London night spot sugaries before getting thrown out for mistaking the bar for the urinal and relieving himself all over them. What club did he play for at the time? <laughs> Question three. Which Chelsea legend gave Robbie Savage a teddy bear impaled onto a vibrator at the Leicester City 2001 party with the message, take this because you're the only prick in a Leicester City shirt at the moment. Question four. In 2009, Harry, King of the Jungle Redknapp, banned Spurs players from having a Christmas party. Despite this, one of their strikers hired a private jet to take 16 members of the squad on an all-day drinking session in Dublin, leading to each player being fined 20 grand. Name that striker. Which former, question five, sorry. Five is which former Liverpool centre-back and club legend got in trouble at the club's 98 Christmas party after cavorting with a number of strippers on the dance floor, covering them in whipped cream whilst dressed as Quasimodo? <laughs> Which notorious former Celtic player ended up in hospital following the club's 2001 party and in a prison cell after their 2002 party? <laughs> Question seven. Which then Chelsea manager regretted putting Vinnie Jones in charge of organizing the club's 94 party after the midfielder arranged a game of dwarf throwing as the night's entertainment. Question eight. The 98 West Ham party saw two of their players arrested for criminal damage and a fray after they attacked a passing car. One of those players was Trevor Sinclair. Who was the other? And the clue is his former clubs include Millwall, Spurs and Liverpool. Question nine. Which Midlands-based club organized the night of bowling for their Christmas party in an effort to sidestep any raucous shenanigans? Only to see their efforts outdone when a few of the players paid for 20 strippers to come bowling with them. <laughs> Danish midfielder Stig Tofting was released from AGF Arthas after knocking out four of his teammates at the Christmas bash because they ripped his shirt. Which financially strapped Lancashire-based club was the only English club he played for? Is everyone ready to move on to another round? This is Christmas quotes. Uh, so continuing in the festive theme, these are all quotes uh, regarding football and Christmas. Uh, be pretty warned, there's quite a lot here about congestion of fixtures around Christmas, which we, we all love. Um, qu question number one. Question number one. Which famously dull ex-striker tweeted this on Christmas Day? Christmas is underrated. I'm being heckled by Kevin Keegan over here. <laughs> Which is great. All right, Kev, we've all had a coffee. Which famously dull ex-striker tweeted this on Christmas Day 2014? 
Christmas is underrated. Best day of the year by far. Hashtag family. which golf club fearing fullback said this. This is the first festive period I have been at Fulham. So at training on Christmas morning, I don't know if anyone was wearing silly party hats or throwing around any of the banter. Maybe Martin Yo will have a Christmas hat on. Question number three. Which bubble-blowing midfielder said this? There are soldiers out in Afghanistan or Iraq that are not with their families and they are getting bullets fired at them. Playing football over Christmas is not the worst thing in the world, is it? Uh, question number four. Which, <laughs> which manager said, from the beginning, when something was wrong, I've been saying, Dilly ding, dilly dong, wake up. I'll just stop there, shall I? <laughs> dilly dong, dilly ding, dilly dong, wake up, wake up. So on Christmas Day, I bought all the players and all the staff a little bell. It was just a joke. <laughs> Which French man said, at Christmas, nobody works in the world and everybody watches the Premier League. I would cry if you changed that. It's part of English tradition and English football. Question number six, the quotes round. Which prickly manager said, to Big Sam, the Christmas card is not big enough because I really enjoy writing a message to a good guy. Okay, number seven, ready for number seven? Which Dutch philosopher said, I'm only here because of Premier League rules. I have to talk with you. Merry Christmas. Enjoy the wine and the mince pie. Goodbye. Okay, question number eight. Question number eight. Which, which Sandra loving manager said, all the Sandras, which Sandra loving manager said, I don't care about Christmas, we're going to train on Christmas Day. Question number nine of the quiz round. Which nomadic Brexit enthusiast said, when my wife first saw Mark, she said he was a fine specimen of a man. She says I have nothing to worry about, but I think she wants me to buy her a QPR shirt with his name on the back for Christmas. Particularly with number 10. Um, number 10. Which church going South American said, without Jesus, I cannot do anything? And Jesus is about, you know, Christmas is about Jesus, so that's fine, that counts. Which church going South American said, without Jesus, I can not do anything? The shortest quote of the lot, and I've messed it up. Which, without Jesus, I cannot do anything? Anything else repeated? All good? Cool. So this is round four, we're on round four, and we're going top five most expensive Premier League January signings.
In any order, right down the top five, most expensive Premier League January signings. It's after Christmas. 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 It's most expensive January signings in the Premier League. <laughs> so this is the next top five highest spending managers in football history. That's your next top five. I'll, I'll do it again. I'll do it again. <laughs> top five highest spending managers in football history. <laughs> Round four again. Top five, top five, top five. First one, most expensive Premier League January signings. So that's the first top five. And the second top five, highest spending managers in football history. In football history. Not anything. Football history. The history of football. Anything. Anything. Right, so question one, goalkeeper. Who swapped Madrid for Paris between the sticks? So you're looking for the name and then the first letter. Okay? Right, next one, right back. Portuguese fullback and fantasy football favorite. Left back. Uh, yeah. Le left back. Best known for his ability to score goals from long range, including being a free kick specialist. Played for Republic of Ireland and Leeds. Next question. Centre back. Centre back. Real Madrid royalty. Next centre back, infamous chant, but which brother is the best? Sister called Belinda. Right wing, we're going from the sublime to the ridiculous now in the level of difficulty of these, because right wing is Algerian captain. Left wing, left wing. Current assistant manager at Burnley. Former teams include Nottingham Forest, Swindon Town and Shrewsbury Town. Current assistant manager at Burnley. Former teams include Nottingham Forest, Swindon Town and Shrewsbury Town. Centre mid, centre mid. Which Peruvian player had over 500 league appearances and ended his career at Hartlepool? Next centre mid. Next centre midfielder. Which bearded Italian hard tackling nails midfield, Warlord, went squared up to Joe Jordan? Bearded Italian hard tackling nails midfield warlord when squared up to Joe Jordan. Striker. Hungry Uruguayan. Last striker. Two middle names William and Ivanhoe. Striker. Two middle names. William, that's one. Now, round six is feeling festive. Number one, which ex-Bayern Munich striker scored 
three goals for Man City between 2009 and 2013. Next one, number two. Name the flying Spanish winger who Sevilla loves so much they named their stadium after him. Number three, number three. Which lumbering forward was listed as 14th wealthiest sports person age 30 or under in the Sunday Times Rich List? Which lumbering forward was listed as the 14th wealthiest sports person age 30 or under in the Sunday Times Rich List? Number four. Jesus died when he was 33. Which Man City player was given that number when he arrived at the club in 2017? Jesus died when he was 33. Which Man City player was given the number when he arrived at the club in 2017? All Christmas related, again, answers are all, all feeling festive, festive fun. Wearing his skull cap. Who is responsible? Pet check. Wearing his skull cap. Number six, Arsene Wenger, once referred to this player as the complete player. Please name that player. Number seven, which Real Madrid reject is nicknamed Fideo, which means noodle in Spanish due to his slender frame. Which Real Madrid reject is named Fiedo? But which means noodle in Spanish. Dude, he's slender frame. Very slender. Say slender again. Slender. <laughs> again, it's all festive. All Christmassy related. It's in the name. Number eight. Which Norwegian made a name for himself on the south coast? Which Norwegian made or is making a name for himself on the south coast? Again, all related, it's all in the name. That was number eight. We're moving on to number nine. This player is the all-time goal scorer for the Netherlands. Bracket Holland, close bracket. That was number nine. Moving on to number ten. Again, it's festive fun. It's feeling festive, it's all in the name. Something will relate to the name for this festive time of year. Is it, is it festive? It's in the name, mate. Yeah, festive, it's festive. Feeling festive, it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all in the name. Number 10. In 2009, which player was named Football League Player of the Year, PFA League One Player of the Year, Leeds United's Young Player of the Year, and Leeds United's Players Player of the Year? 